clash with Islamist fighters in the Ambar province. Uh, CNN's Michael Holmes is in Baghdad uh, with the latest. And Michael, this car bombing was targeting army recruits again. What is a local government doing to quell the violence there, Michael? Yeah, that, I, I, Amara, that's right. It's the second time in just a few days, really. It was only last Thursday that a car bomb targeted army recruits and uh, 13 were killed, 25 wounded in that. Well, today what happened, this happened at a bus station in central Baghdad. The car bomb went off. It was targeting recruits that had already signed up and were actually headed back to their home provinces. Uh, three were killed and 12 wounded. I can also tell you that just in the last hour or two there has been a second car bombing here in Baghdad. This is in an area called Qadamir, a predominantly Shiite area of the capital uh, in a square there in a very busy time of day. Four people so far, we're told, have been killed in that and 14 have been wounded. Now, in the, in the restive and problematic Anbar province, where you find the cities of Fallujah and Ramadi, of course, it has been, we're told, a fairly quiet day. No new clashes to report there. There was a meeting between tribal sheikhs in Fallujah or tribal leaders in Fallujah and uh, the new mayor who's been appointed there to try to get some sort of compromise going to get the army to pull back and reduce the tensions there. That meeting uh, failed to achieve anything. So it's uh, the situation, the standoff, if you like, continues there with the Iraqi military. And I want to take you further north in the country, uh, the province of Mosul, which since really 2011 or so has been a, a center of uh, activity for those Al-Qaeda-linked militants, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Police there are saying they have rounded up 137 of what they are calling ISIS suspects. Also can report to you that Iraqi military choppers have been in action up near the Syrian border. This also in Mosul province. They say that they attacked three pickups with armed men on board. Five people were killed there, what they say were also these, uh, these militants up in that region. So a lot of increasing activity in Mosul province, which is also worrying authorities here, Amra. Uh, Michael, can we talk a bit about what exactly is behind this surge in violence since the Americans pulled out of Iraq? Is this a uh, fighting between government and al-Qaeda-linked forces, or is this about uh, tensions between the Sunnis and the Shiites? Yeah, it's a very good question and it's an important uh, distinction to make. There are very differing views on that. The al-Maliki government, and Mr. al-Maliki as recently as yesterday, is calling this a war on terror, a war on al-Qaeda, uh, particularly in Anbar province. Now, the tribal leaders in Anbar province say that's really a smokescreen. Yes, these fighters are there. Yes, they are a problem. They say, let us deal with it. Some tribal, because not all tribes think the same, obviously, and some of these tribal leaders have joined forces with those fighters to combat the government. But a lot of the tribal leaders there say this is more about the al-Maliki government continuing to crack down on Sunnis in general, that they have been disenfranchised, cut out of the political process, they feel alienated, and a lot of what you're seeing is really a grassroots Sunni revolt to how they feel they've been treated by the government. So there's a couple of different narratives at play here. Uh, the the al-Qaeda-linked fighters, they do exist, but the Sunni tribal leaders in that part of the country, they're saying it's being overblown by the al-Maliki government and that the real issue is how they are being treated and have been treated for many years now, Amra. Mm. Michael Holmes watching the complex situation on the ground for us live in Baghdad. Uh, Michael, thank you.